Hello and welcome to Food Tech 101. Now, before we get into this, I want you to solve an age old debate or dispute for me. Every time I have this lesson, I have a debate over what we call this particular food. Now, is it a scone or a scone? Now, I have to argue with all the time that it's a scone, but the kids, they, they boo me down and call it a scone. I say, how do you pronounce cone, an ice cream cone? C-O-N-E, put an S in front of it, you've got scone. But they argue and they argue and they argue. So, what is it, a scone or a scone? If you think it's a scone, write scone in the description. If you think it's a scone, write scone spelled S-C-O-N, scone. Let's settle this once and for all across the entire globe. What's it called, a scone or a scone? Let's get into it. Before we get started, just do me a quick favor. Click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon so you'll be the first to know whenever I upload a new video. Okay, let's get to it. So scones are kind of interesting. As well as being a bit controversial in terms of how you pronounce it, scone or scone, hopefully we've, we've sorted it out with the comments below. Uh, what are they? Are they a pastry? Are they a bread? Are they a biscuit? Sometimes the Americans refer to biscuits and what they refer to as biscuits and gravy. It looks like a scone to me. I don't know. But whatever it is, we're going to have a go at making it today and it's really, really easy. I'm going to make scones two ways. I'm going to make a sweet version and a savoury version. So I'm going to give you the basic recipe and that allows you to modify it any way you want. You can make it savoury, you can make it sweet, you can add fruit in it, you can add whatever you actually want to add but I'll give you the basic ingredients. And we're gonna make scones, or scones, two ways. Let's get into it. Okay, now to make our scones really couldn't be easier. Let's just talk through the ingredients. First of all, we have 150 mils of milk. You can use a plant-based milk, it works just as well. We have 250 grams of flour, 50 grams of butter, 25 grams of sugar, and about 75 grams of raisins, or whatever mixed fruit you'd like to use. Now it's worth noting, in the flour, I am using self-raising flour which actually has baking powder already in it, but most recipes actually call to add a little bit more baking powder as well, gives it a little bit more lift. So we've got flour, self-raising flour with baking powder. Now normally when I'm making my scones, I normally make them with wholemeal flour, gives a bit of extra taste, a bit of extra fibre, but I don't actually have any today, so I'm using white flour instead. Now this part is your basic ingredients to make your scone and then you can modify it any which way you like. Add a bit of sugar, add some raisins, or a bit later on, I'm also going to make some savory ones with some vegetables and some cheese and stuff like that as well. So you can mix and match it, but this here, this part is your basic recipe. You'll need your butter, your flour, and your milk. Now to make our scones, uh, we start off with the flour and the butter or the margarine. And we use a technique called the rubbing in method. It's a pastry making technique, which really, heightened the debate as to whether or not this is a pastry or bread. But nevertheless, the rubbing in method, basically we rub a mix of flour into the fat until it resembles super fine breadcrumbs. So you grab and squeeze, grab and squeeze until there's no lumps of fat left. This typically takes about two or three minutes. Okay, so here we are. The fat has been completely mixed in with the flour and it's nice and light with no lumps whatsoever. So once you fully rub the fat in with the flour, it's quite easy and we add the rest of our dry ingredients. So for this one, it's a sweet one, so I'm gonna add my 25 grams of sugar. You can add more or less according to what you want. And for this one, I'm gonna add some dried fruit. So I've got some, some, some raisins here. In you go, mix it together a little bit and then it's all brought together with milk. So this particular scone is not a vegan one, but it's very easy to make a vegan equivalent. Uh, most uh, vegetable fats uh, work in exactly the same way as butter would. So you, if you use a vegetable fat and you use a plant-based milk, it works exactly the same. So I'm gonna add my milk and mix. Once you mix together with your knife, you just bring your hands in Bring it all together to, to form a dough. If for whatever reason your mixture happens to be a little bit wet, because maybe you added a touch too much liquid, a bit too much milk, just add a touch of flour and that'll absorb some of the liquid and you should end up with a nice 
fairly soft, pliable dough. Not too sticky. Now I'm ready for the rolling out stage. You can either roll out or just pat down. Sometimes I like to pat down. We're aiming for something about the thickness, a little bit thicker than the thickness of your thumb on the side. So I'm gonna roll it out a little bit. Each time I'm rolling it, I'm moving it to make sure it's not sticking. And I don't want it too flat because I want quite nice thick scones at the end of the day. So this is just about the thickness of my thumb on the side, which is just about what I'm after. So now I just punch out my shapes and get my shapes onto my cooking tray. Punching out shapes from dough is strangely satisfying. When you're cutting out your shapes, try and make sure your shapes are cut out as close to each other as possible, rather than one, two, three. What's really important as well is try and make sure your, your mixture is about the same thickness. It's really important when you're making a batch that all your mixture is the same thickness, in particular, so it cooks at the same rate. If you have one super fat one, and one quite skinny one or, or, or thin one, then they're not gonna cook at the same rate. Okay, these are my shapes. As you can see, they're fairly evenly, evenly cut out, fairly evenly thick. So now I'm just gonna pop them in the oven. Okay, this is just a bit of a, a bonus feature. So while the sweet scones are baking, I thought I'd quickly do a variation and do a savory scone. So this one here, I've already um, rubbed in my fat and flour. There's gonna be a pinch of salt in it. Pinch of salt. And then additionally, I'm gonna add some mixed herbs. And then I've got some onion already, already chopped up. Put my onion in. I've got some sweet pepper. Put some sweet pepper in. And then for these ones, I'm gonna add some cheese. So this makes it quite a rich flavour, some scones. So I've mixed all my ingredients together. I started off by using the rubbing method to combine the fat and flour. And into that, I added some cheese, some herbs, a bit of salt, some pepper. So we have quite a rich, flavoursome scone mix. But we need a liquid to bind it all together. So I'm going to add in my milk, about 150 mils. And then mix it all together. Once it's all combined, just get your hands in roughly and just pull it together to form a dough. Okay, so here we have our mixture. It's combined quite nicely. A little bit of kneading, just to make sure it combines well. The more you knead, the more gluten you develop. Gluten is that thing you get in bread, which is a bit stretchy like, like rubber, but it will help to help bind some of the ingredients together. So I'm just really combining, but you're not really kneading. You are just bringing together to form a dough. So here we have our dough. Now, again, I want these about the thickness of my thumb on the side. Maybe a little bit thicker, but not much. So I'm just going to press it down. I don't need to roll it much, just a little bit. Make sure it's an even height all round. That's about right. So now, just cut out my shapes, just like before. Boom. And there we have our scones, nice and cut out. So again, I'm going to pop these in the oven and let them bake for about 15 to 20 minutes until they're nice and golden brown and puff right up. And here we are, fresh out of the oven. These things smell literally amazing. They've swollen up perfectly. Great height. They've got a good high size in them. They smell amazing. That's my little extra one I, I just baked. But just look at these. Absolutely fantastic. Now, if you can, allow them to cool, if you can. But of course, you can eat them hot, slice them open, blob of butter, jam or cream, your scone your way. But here they are done. Wow. Now, stuff can look good. But as always, the proof of the pudding is in eating. So let's see what this thing actually tastes like. Oh man. Oh. This could be the nicest scone I think I've ever had. It's light, really light and fluffy. Creaminess, 
I taste the flavour of the butter coming through. Raisins give a nice little sharp, natural bit of sweetness going through with, with, the, with the jam. Oh, this is absolutely delicious. Oh, and so simple. Mmm. Wow. From beginning to end, you can make a scone in about, what, half an hour? I'm going to be a quick dessert or part of a main meal. Absolutely delicious. Mmm. And here we are, fresh out of the oven. We have our cheese, sweet pepper and herb scones. Wow. Just look at that. Oh, I wish you could smell. They smell amazing. Okay, we tried the sweet ones, now let's try the savoury ones. Now, first of all, they smell amazing. You can really smell the herbs coming through really, really strong, combined with the cheese and the onion coming through. So they smell really, really rich. They're so rich, in fact, you can probably have them by themselves without necessarily having to put anything in them. Or they work really well uh, if you have them with something like a soup. Break them open. Really, really light and fluffy on the inside. Let's have a taste. Oh, wow. Soft, a little bit chewy. Crunchy for the onions. Funnily enough, the flavour's not overpowering at all. Subtle, nice and slightly soft and almost chewy on the inside. Oh, really, really well. Almost like, um, almost part way, almost like a bit of a dumpling, but really, really good. Now, because it's so much more filling, they're a little bit denser than the regular, uh, regular scones, but it still tastes absolutely fantastic. And there we have it, scones or scones done two ways. Really simple, really easy, really quick recipe. You can have it either sweet or savoury. Well, thanks for watching another episode of Food Tech 101. As always, my name is Mr. Liber, but you can call me Sir. Okay.